So I would like to talk about perennial kale today. Perennial kale is one of my favorite perennial vegetables. And um, here's a nice example here of a uh, of one, one perennial kale plant on the uh, south side of our forest garden. And uh, just think about it, perennial kale. Kale is a, a crop that lots of gardeners know. People know it from supermarkets. It's a very well liked, super nutritious vegetable. And uh, isn't it awesome that there's actually a perennial version of that? So here we go. So this is a perennial kale. And uh, what makes it perennial is that uh, after it flowers, if it flowers, some of them don't flower, um, but after flowering, it will actually send out new shoots, new vegetative be growth, and uh, make uh, put a, a section of the plant's energy will be saved for the year after. So it's putting a bit of energy over to the next year's vegetative production. And that's an important uh, trait that we're after. So this one here is uh, it's actually a known variety of perennial kale. It's uh, called Dobinson. And it's, a, um, it's a supposedly a very, very old variety that's um, uh, cutting propagated. So it's, um, it's one that's, uh, to make new plants, you take cuttings because it doesn't flower very often. Um, and uh, that's a, that means it's very, very perennial. Um, here you have a, an example of, uh, it's the end of summer, beginning of fall here. And um, it's actually a perfect time to propagate the perennial kale. And it's also when new growth comes out in the fall. Um, it's just like normal biennial uh, brassicas and kales. Um, these also get affected by some of the same problems. Here in Denmark, we get the uh, cabbage butterfly larvae that uh, sometimes will completely skeletonize um, brassicas. And uh, it's not really an exception with the perennial kales. Uh, sometimes they get affected, sometimes they don't. And I think there might be some genetic factors. Um, this plant, you can see here, there's a, there's a few that got uh, defoliated here. Um, now it's late summer. Uh, the new growth comes out, um, and uh, it's actually uh, there's actually some really nice new growth. So this is um, an excellent salad kale, and it's also good for cooking. Um, and uh, these new leaves here is uh, what I would go for, and uh, so these would make a really nice salad uh, or a cook dish. And uh, and you can see on this perennial kale here that this is all one plant, um, and that means that all, each one of these little branches is actually something you could make a cutting of. Um, so that, that's the main propagation of this variety. And um, some other ones are seed uh, propagated. Um, but this one is uh, primarily cutting uh, propagated. And so I was thinking to show that today. Um, we have a little, a little what is a two liter pot here with uh, potting soil. And um, I can just show there's a, uh, all these little branches here, and we can uh, we'll cut one, trying to find a straight one, make it easier to show. We take, uh, take this one here. So here we have a branch of this perennial kale. And here you can see on the, uh, on the bottom here, it's, uh, this is the kind of the woody part of the, of the brassica. And uh, normal and biennial kales also have this uh, look. Um, with the perennial kales, you, you need this in order to, uh, at this stage, in order to, to propagate them uh, vegetatively, so with, with cuttings. Um, there's these kind of typical eye-shaped um, markers on the stem, which you're, you're going to want to look for. If it's in the summer period, uh, there's going to be a lot of kind of sappy green growth, and that one is re that's really hard to make cuttings from. So. September is uh, September and October, uh, generally kind of early fall, is um, the time that we take cuttings, and it's probably the best time to make cuttings, um, in, in at least in our experience. And um, and if you look closely here, there's actually already a, a new shoot coming from uh, one of these little eyes on the stem, um, and uh, that's actually that can easily be a new shoot. All these other little eyes down here, they'll actually root uh, if you put them under the soil. Um, so we're going to do that with this with this cutting today. Um, this one um, has very little root down here. There's no root at the moment, and it'll take a little while for these things to root. Um, but there's a lot of green top. So in order to make a cutting out of this, we want to remove just about everything that's green on the top. So we're going to remove everything but the very terminal shoot, the terminal bud, 
which uh, which will keep to to start the photosynthesis of this uh, of this cutting. So I'm just going to pull off all these leaves here. And uh, if these were nice looking leaves, uh, we would eat them for dinner, but they're, they're not. They're partly larvae eaten, so we're just going to pull them off right now. And uh, we're getting close now. There's uh, a couple more leaves on the top. We're going to take this big one. This one might, might, uh, <laughs> this one here, uh, you, could, you could keep or you could remove it. I think we'll just keep it for now. I'm pretty confident this will. This will uh, make roots and uh, make a new uh, perennial kale plant. So now we have a, a, a cutting that's about uh, 30 centimeters long, and uh, we'll uh, just stuff it into this, this pot. It's uh, trying to get a lot of the stem in contact with, with potting soil. So there, now I've just stuffed it down in there. Uh, I'm going to top this pot up so there's a little bit more contact, and then I'll um, put this pot, probably, uh, I'll water it, and I'll put it in our unheated greenhouse and uh, they'll probably be overwintered there um, so that uh, they'll start to really grow in the spring. They'll put on a little growth this fall as well um, before, before winter. So we saw the Dovington variety just before and uh, that's a really great variety, nothing against that, but uh, there aren't that many varieties, named varieties of perennial kale out there. Um, and uh, so we would like to make more. We, we think that there needs to be a diversity of varieties that, uh, that gardeners can use in their gardens or even farms. And uh, so we started a few, uh, several years ago on a uh, perennial kale breeding project. And uh, the goal of the project is to breed a bunch of new varieties of perennial kale that, um, that are similar to that previous variety we talked about, but also have some different colors, some different shapes, um, maybe a bit more winter hardiness for, for colder zones. And uh, so that's been the kind of the goal of the project. And of course, the, one of the main things is that it needs to be perennial. Um, we, want, we want to really select for that perenniality so that, uh, so that we have that in the future of the gene pool. So what we've done is we've taken um, a bunch of different sources of different perennial kales from all over, and uh, including the Dovington variety, um, which we got to flower, and, uh, and we've started crossing them. Uh, and then every year we grow out a whole bunch of those seeds, uh, and then we do selections. And, and so we're really trying to get a big spread of genes to express themselves, which we can then select the best varieties from. And uh, every year uh, that whole mass of, of perennial kales that goes to flower, uh, and then we remove the, the ones that we don't think have the qualities we want, and then keep the ones that we do, and then those will will flower the year after, and and so on, um, and then each year we make a new generation. And uh, right here we have actually three different generations. We have the first generation uh, uh, two years ago, three years ago, right back here. Uh, then a generation here last year we started, and then uh, a big uh, new generation behind me, and uh, we'll we'll have a look at them all. Um, but again, here we have a. Uh, this plant is a, it, it's a little bit reminiscent of the Dovington uh, variety. It's a little more curled, uh, a little thicker leaves. Um, and then here we have one that's, uh, that's got a lot of purple in it. That's really cool. I really like that. Uh, and then we have other ones that look a little more like, like a Lacinato or a palm dinosaur kale, that kind of a thing. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of different, uh, different genes in here. This one is a little more uh, flat leafed without the uh, the curled edges um, so there's for hopefully there'll be a lot of new varieties coming um, of, of perennial kales so this is really fun it's a really fun project and uh, it requires other people come and and grow seeds uh, and we get as many seeds grown out as possible then we can uh, really find ones that are that work in in our garden uh, and then people that get seeds from us because we also distribute seeds. Um, if, if they want to try some of this out, they can actually grow out as many plants as possible. And, uh, and then you can select for your own garden which varieties are the best in your own climate, and your own situation, and, uh, and get some really good varieties, hopefully, that way.
And then you can cutting propagate those varieties and make more plants of those if you want. So in our experience, most of these plants, if you don't take cuttings, they live maybe five years, maybe up to eight years, some around there. Um, but as soon as you start making cuttings, the, the plant is renewed and you start basically start the clock again. So you're uh, back to zero and uh, that cutting will be a new plant that lives again that five or eight years. So it's a, it's a pretty cool vegetable. You can do a lot with it. These are the, the same as the others we showed. Um, it, again, you can uh, take cuttings and uh, on, a, on a larger scale, you can also do this um, by putting them directly uh, where you want them to grow in the, in the right season. Here, the end of September is a really, really good season. Um, so we can take, uh, take a cutting from this plant. Here's a nice one. Again, with some eyes. So it's a bit woody. And, uh, and here we have uh, already some new shoots coming out of that. That's a really nice vegetative quality. And uh, then we'll put this plant uh, directly in the ground where it's going to grow. But first we have to peel the leaves. So. Take it all the way back to that right there, and, uh, and then we'll go put it in the ground. So here we have a nice uh, prepared vegetable bed and uh, a little bit of pre-weeding. It's, uh, it's going to be in a perennial vegetable, so it's important to start with a bed which, which has uh, no perennial weeds to start with especially, and of course a good ground cover um, so you don't have to do uh, very much weeding um, later in the, in the season or the next years. Uh, and maybe you'll decide to top it up or you can put on a ground cover of uh, some sort of plant. But uh, we're going to start a new row here and uh, it's basically, uh, it's pretty simple. You put it directly in the ground uh, this time of year in the early autumn. Take a, take a shovel or a spade and uh, kind of press it directly into the ground as deep as you can kind of easily get it. You're going for at least 20, 25 centimeters deep if you can. And then you open up the back and there's a, it opens up a little crevice there. And, uh, and then you can uh, hopefully get your uh, cutting down in there as you pull out your tool. So that a good amount of that cutting is sitting under the ground level. And uh, that could have been a little deeper, but it's gonna work, I'm pretty sure. Um, and you should definitely do it when the soil is moist or uh, when it's about to rain, um, because they need water right away, those cuttings to make, to make roots. So all of these, uh, these new generation of plants that, that, that are standing behind me, they are, uh, they're all seed started this year uh, from our diverse seed mix that, that we are, uh, are crossing together and, and, and selecting from. And uh, they're, all, they're really easy to grow. So they, they're started just like any normal uh, brassica. Um, we usually start them in uh, April or May. Um, we usually start them in the greenhouse in pots, but you can easily do them outdoors or you can do them on a, a windowsill in your house or, or whatever, um, just generally in spring. Um, they're really vigorous and fast growing, so they're pretty, pretty easy. Um, they need space, so like all of these plants, they're, they're put about half a meter apart in every direction, and you can see they fully fill that space. Um, you can even put more space between them probably, um, but they're, they're, they're pretty easy. Um, we, we like to put a nice ground cover down, so a nice la layer of mulch um, down before we put, tra put transplants out into that, and uh, it works really well. So they're pretty easy to start. And then the year after, um, the first year, then they'll uh, start flowering, most of them. Some of them won't flower probably, um, but most will flower, and there the selection starts. So you want to look at the ones that have good vegetative growth while flowering or just after flowering and setting seed. And then, then those are the ones you want to take seed from if you're taking seed or cuttings. Uh, the ones that put all their energy into flowers, and make a big flower stalk, those you want to remove actually because they're putting too much energy into the flowering and it weakens the plants. So it's a less perennial plant that does that. So it's more like your biennial kales or, or uh, rather brassicas. Just to give you an idea of the uh, 
variety and diversity of, uh, of kale types we're getting out of here. Just check this out. We're getting uh, out of a selection of different plants. Look at all these varieties we're getting here. Isn't this really? I love this diversity. And uh, they also have a little bit of different flavors. So um, that's a, a pretty interesting thing too. So you'll have to, uh, if you get some seeds from us, you'll have to also taste your way through them and see which ones you like the best. I like them all. Uh, I think they're just awesome. And uh, look at this abundance back here. I love it. So uh, perennial kale, a pretty fun plant to grow. That'll make a nice dinner. <laughs>